Come on, guys. Let's now solve question number one B from our Jan 2025 examination paper. This question is from the topic of accounting standard 90. Not a very different question, very usual question. There have been similar several instances where they've asked a question like this. So in this question, what they've done is they've asked you to tell whether the lease for which the asset is given is it operating lease or is it finance lease. You have to decide that, and you are also asked to determine the unearned finance income. Quickly to tell you about lease, let's say I own the asset, I have given the asset to you on lease. That lease on which I have given it to you can be two types, operating lease, finance lease. The way we decide the decision of whether it is operating lease or financing lease is very important because accounting for operating lease is very different from for finance. Operating lease means I have given it to you on rent, you pay me rent. You are lessee, the one who has taken the asset. I am lesser, the one who has given it. I remain the owner. Whenever you pay me lease payment or lease rental, it is expense to you. Whenever I receive it, it is income to me. To me, lease rental is income. To you, lease rental is expense. I am the owner. I will charge depreciation on that is operating lease. In finance lease, it looks like lease, but it is not lease. I have not just given you the asset. I have given the risk, reward, and almost effective control of the asset also. Legally, I am the owner, but by substance over form, you will be treated like an owner. In the case of finance lease, lesser doesn't charge depreciation. Let's see charges depreciation. When do we call it a finance lease? Very simple. The lease asset what I give to you, I should transfer subs what is say or say substantial risk and reward of the asset. Second point: the period for which I have given it to you on lease covers the substantial useful life of the asset. Period covers the substantial useful life. Money that I collect from you, which I and you have agreed in the agreement, are two things. One is called as lease rental. Second thing, at the end of the lease, I will give you an option to buy the asset at a price lesser than its fair value in a finance. So basically, you will promise to pay me lease rental throughout the lease period. At the end of the lease period, you will pay me residual value. And you have guaranteed that to me by way of agreement. So this is the minimum lease payment that you have promised to pay to me. Minimum lease payment is the payment promised by lessee to lesser. By way of a lease agreement, that will include two things, lease rentals and guarantee residual value. And other than the assets that you take, if there is some portion of the asset that you don't take at the end of the lease, I can sell it to somebody else. And somebody else might give me some money. That is money that I will receive, not from you, but from somebody. That is unguaranteed residual value. Unguaranteed residual value has nothing to do with less. It has something to do with lesser only. I will receive, but you will not pay. You guys getting it? So, in this question, they want us to tell whether it is operating lease or finance. Like I just mentioned, we will tell whether it is operating lease or finance lease based on these conditions. Number one, lessee will get the ownership of the asset at the end of lease. Second point, lessee has an option to buy the asset at the end of lease period at a price lesser than the fair value. Condition number three. The lease period covers substantial portion of the life of the asset. Condition number four, money that is promised by lessee to lesser by way of the lease agreement is called MLP. Call it minimum lease payment. Minimum money what the lessee should pay to lesser by way of lease. That minimum money what you should pay me is not paid today. You pay it by deferred installments over the lease period. If today I would have to consider it, I should not take it at its normal value. You have to take it at present value. If you are paying me lease rental of 1 lakh after 1 year, today its value is 90,900 at 10% present value. If you are paying me 1 lakh lease rental after 2 years, today its value is 82,600. After 3 years, 1 lakh is today 75,100. So basically, you need to apply present value factor and then take it. So, the present value of the lease payments, what lessee will pay to lesser, together, it should cover substantial portion of the cost. If it covers substantial portion of the cost, then again it is finance. Asset should be of such specialized nature that only lessee can use. And if somebody else has to use the asset, we have to make major modification. If all of these conditions or majority of these conditions are fulfilled, then we call it finance. What is very important to know here, what majority of the students fail to notice is, few people think of some percentages as substantial period. Should cover minimum 75% of the period, 50% of the period, 90%, 85%. Like the bare text of the standard, there is no such percentage given. So it is decided based on professional judgment. 69% if it covers, is it good enough or not good enough? We can't tell. 
you have to see several other conditions other four conditions and then decide you guys getting it so it's always professional judgment not any percentage cap remember that now let's start with the question from the beginning to begin we have j limited the name of the company j limited availed an equipment on lease from k limited so k limited is the owner k limited is the owner or we can call as lesser this company has given the asset on lease to lessee which is j limited and further the lease is starting on 1st of april 2020 it is for a period of 4 years whose full life of the asset is 6 so asset is given for 4 years lease its useful life is 6 so that percentage when we compute no yeah that percentage when we compute we are going to do it like this lease period is lease term divided by life of the asset 4 by 6 which is 66.67 percent 66.67 percentage of the useful life asset is on lease is this sufficient to make decision no we will check other conditions and later judge it based on profession i can't tell if it is more than 70 percent it is finance lease if it is less than 70 percent it is operating lease no there is no such condition then they are telling cost and fair value of the asset is 12 lakh 50 to me lesser it is 12 lakh 50 meaning if i sell it today and if i collect cash from somebody i will collect 12 lakh 50 thousand rupees now if i collect full cash but from you i am collecting in installments i would end up collecting slightly i would have to find the present value of mlp here to find the present value of mlp they have told that uh, equipment reverts back to lesser on termination of lease meaning at the end of the lease lessee will give it back to lesser this condition is making it look like operating lease but not sufficient data to conclude that let's see third condition unguaranteed residual value is 1 lakh 20 unguaranteed residual value is the money what lesser will receive not from lessee but from somebody else are you getting it so i'll find mlp minimum lease payment to be paid by lessee so that i will add unguaranteed residual value that is my gross investment total investment that you made on that asset to you you are supposed to pay only mlp to me i'm supposed to collect mlp from you and unguaranteed residual value from somebody else. understood and have they told the lease payments they have not told how much but all that they have told all that they have told in sir sir was not you are going to receive four equal installments they have told how much per installment have they told how much per installment no but they have told four lease payments have to be paid by lessee all four are equal first lease payment is equal to second lease payment is equal to third lease payment is equal to fourth lease payment let's use the data irr is at 8 percent they have given rate of interest also that present value factor also come on let's uh, get back to this see what we have to do is lease rental for first four years is same to this i will add guaranteed residual value which is not given in the question are you getting it on that present value factor also will be zero 0.735 is 8 percent for four years if i add lease rental plus guaranteed residual value i'll get mlp which i don't know Am I right? To this MLP, if I add unguaranteed residual value of 1 lakh 20, I will get gross investment. Are you getting it? But this money of 1 lakh 20 plus lease rentals, whatever I am going to receive, is not today. It is in the future dates. I will discount it to today. Shall I? This entire amount is same every year. I can apply annuity factor. Am I right? Annuity factor for 8% for 4 years is 3.31. They have given in the question. Right, 3.31, and uh, I don't know the amount, so I can't find it. On 1 lakh 20 unguaranteed residual value, as a lesser, I would receive it after the lease period. Fourth year, 0.735. 1 lakh 20 into 0.735, you would get 88,200. This is gross investment. Present value of gross investment will be here. Basically, present value of gross investment is also called as net investment is the money that i would receive if asset is sold right now full cash is collected right now. this is equal to cost or fair value this question how much is cost or fair value given in the question 12 lakh 50 if i give the asset to you right now lease illa yen illa full cash and carry how much money will i collect 12 lakh 50 in that present value of unguaranteed digital value is 88200 deduct 88200 from 12 lakh 50 you will get 11,61,800. 11,61,800 is the money that I am collecting from you at present value. Meaning, I will collect more than 11,61,800. 
whatever money you pay present value of it is 11,61,800 as a lessee you pay me two things one lease rental two guaranteed residual value in this case guaranteed residual value is zero can I say entire 11,61,800 is lease rental that you pay present value that is after present value factor so there is some amount if I multiply that with 3.312 I will get 11,61,800 so take 116800 and divide it by 3.312 what do you get 350800 rupees is what you pay at the end of every year to me for how many times four times so do 350785 into 4 how much does it come to 14,00,000 plus zero guaranteed residual value Basically, the money that you are supposed to pay me is 14,03,140. But you pay it in 4 installments, the present value of it is 11,61. And I will receive that money from you. I will also receive 1,20,000 from somebody else. So, I will add them together. It is 15,23,000. Basically, as a lesser, from you I collect 15,23,140. How much money do I collect? 15,23,140. Over 4 years. If I find the present value, I am collecting only 12,50. More than 12,50, whatever I am collecting from you is because of delay. If you would have paid full money for the asset right now, I would have collected only 12,50. I have collected that extra. How much is extra? 15,23,140 minus 12,50. That money I have collected only because you have delayed the payment. 2,73,140. That is more like interest income to me or finance income to me. And at the beginning of the lease, it is not yet earned. That is what is called as unearned finance income. People use formulas to do this. I am telling you no need to use formula. Is rental plus guaranteed residual value MLP. MLP plus unguaranteed residual value present value. Sorry GI. If you find present value of this. And you will get present value of GI which is N9. Difference between present value of GI and GI is nothing but unearned finance income. Works good for any problem on AS19. You don't have to use even a single formula. Literal logic can solve any problem. Whether it is backward, forward, number missing, number available, anything. Second part of the question. I have asked you to determine unearned finance income here. That is 2,73,140. For checking whether it is finance lease or operating lease, we need to compare present value of MLP. MLP is 14,03,140. Present value is 11,61,800. Take 11,61,800 divided by 12,50. See here, we will take present value of MLP 11,61,800. Divided it by 1,050. That covers how much percentage? 92.94%. And the uh, or say lease is not get lessee is not getting the ownership, but it is given back. Keeping that aside, 66% of the useful life the asset is with lessee. 92.94% of the money is collected back. Considering this, I will give the answer based on professional judgment. This lease is actually finance. So lessee should act like owner. Lessee should record and charge it. Not. And this is the answer to this question.